We've all been here. You've got some object it's sitting on a background, but you want to paint some patterning on top of the object. The problem is you don't want it also going over the background. So how do you do that? Well, if you've been watching Control Paint for long, you're probably saying, oh yeah, that's what a layer mask does, or even a group with a mask on it. Well, sure, that's true, but I'm not going to talk about that today. Today's video is going to be about two mask alternatives. And if you need more clarification about how a basic mask works, check the bottom of the post. I've linked to the older videos. I'll tell you right now, you might groan when you hear how these things work. Because these features are so easy, but for whatever reason, people don't seem to use them all that much. They're sort of hidden away inside of Photoshop. So it's going to be a quick video, but I think you'll like the results. So as you remember from the previous masking videos, this traditional mask has a layer group with a mask on it, and so any layer I draw inside of that group can't go outside of the lines. Simple. If you want a quicker alternative, you can make a new layer, draw wherever you want on that layer, and then go to Layer, Create Clipping Mask. And then what that does is it makes a little arrow pointing down on the layer stack, and this layer is looking to the lowest non-clipping mask layer, which in this case is my blue ball. And it says, that blue ball defines the boundary of my layer. So in a way, the blue ball is masking the line art, those black scribbles I drew. And you can do this in the reverse order as well. You can make a new layer, set it to be a clipping mask, and then any time you draw on this layer, you can't go outside of the lines. Now if I made another layer, and also turned it into a clipping mask, it will still use the blue as the boundaries. So if the idea of a clipping mask was a little bit abstract for you traditional artists out there, this next one is going to be even more confusing. But it's pretty powerful. So with a locked pixel layer, you can take a, any normal layer, and then in the lock part of the layer palette, I can click on the checkerboard, which locks the transparent pixels. And then when I draw on that same layer, and I'll use a very contrasting color, I can't draw outside of the boundaries. So I haven't made a new layer, I haven't made a mask, no clipping mask, the layer uses its own borders as a mask. So this means that I can do any kind of painting I want, and all the while it's still going to be a circle. So this is great for direct painting, but it can be a challenge if you wanted to then separate maybe this green scribble from a red stripe. They're all in the same layer. And then if I unlocked the transparent pixels, I could paint anywhere I wanted, extending those boundaries. And then if I relock them, I have a new shape that I can paint inside of. But all the while, this is still a single layer. This is probably pretty abstract, and I recognize that the examples I gave are, well, ugly. They don't have much to do with real paintings. So in the next video, I'm going to show these two concepts, the clipping mask and locked pixels, in more of a real workflow so you'll see how I'd integrate it into one of my own paintings. And if this is something you already knew about, do me a favor and link the video to someone who doesn't know about it. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned.